Hi there, this is John from Repsoft, and in this presentation we will be giving a brief overview of the high availability functionality built into Rev Scheduler. If anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to email me on the email address shown. HA cutover and scheduling has always had its issues from putting the job on both servers, making sure one is on hold, then releasing jobs after cutovers, etc., through to replicating to a different library name and then going through the renaming of libraries etc way too cumbersome and how also how could you tell where everything was up to with jobs locks on objects etc lots of problems don't forget when you're cutting over that is when it can cost you the most when you're off the air and also the scheduling application runs a lot of the ERP jobs so we asked our customers what they wanted so we could provide a seamless and accurate HA solution within Rev Scheduler that would allow for a smooth transition in the case of a HA cutover Customers wanted two main things. First thing, smooth transition. Throw the switch type of cutover. Run a command or command line. None of this hold and release jobs, renaming libraries, all those issues. And two, something that showed and proved the integrity of the data on both servers in real time that they could run any time they wanted. So basically to give them that warm and fuzzy. This high availability functionality is available on all platforms that Repsoft runs on. So basically, all platforms. One customer running on iSeries has over a thousand shadow jobs and the last cutover took less than five seconds for Rev Scheduler and had 100% accuracy. Okay, we want to do that. What are the requirements? Two things. One, Rev Scheduler. Two, Rev View. And both Rev Scheduler and Rev View must be operational and active on both servers. The HA functionality is built into all platforms, but in this example we're working iSeries, where it all began. When looking at a server, the data can be split into two main areas, excluding system libraries, ERP and RevSoft, on both servers. The third-party HA software looks after the ERP libraries, and RevSoft shadows the RevSoft libraries. The jobs in RevSoft can be further split into two main areas, server-specific jobs, housekeeping, backups, etc., ERP jobs. So now we need a method to only shadow the ERP jobs and any other jobs required to be replicated. Okay, cool. So, what are the basic rules? Rule 1, shadowing is performed by RevSoft and not the third party HA software. Rule 2, Rev Scheduler and Rev View are always active. Okay, so how do we set it up? Even simpler, two steps. Define the failover host or hosts as we can do one to many then select the individual job events or environments. Shadowing by environment is far simpler as when you want to add, update or delete a job and it is for an environment that has HA selected it's automatically done for you. If you do it by selecting a job event you may forget. It is pretty simple. Okay so let's have a look here. We're looking at iSeries, RevSoft Lab 01. It's going to do the failover to RevSoft QA V5R1, an old 170 running V5R1. And we test a lot of the times our Windows software on there. If it runs with a reasonable response time there, we know it's going to be very fast everywhere else. That's step one. Then we have star HA environment that is being shadowed. When we look at the jobs, we've got 461 jobs, 39 have been selected. For HA, 25 by selecting individual ones, 14 by environment, all very simple. And if we look at a job events grid, we can see there by selecting the high availability column, the ones selected by environment have the environment symbol image beside them. The individual ones actually have the job event image. On the failover server as well, we can also go to the failover server click a list of shadows and what it will do it will give us a list of the shadow job events and this is the ones there we can see the primary system has the grapes and the failover server has the onion it has 25 as well 25 individually 14 by environment so these are in sync the numbers are in sync now the second major requirement we had from our customers was something that showed and proved the integrity of the data on both servers. So what we created was a HA integrity checker. Now this checks the data on both servers in real time. If we come up with ticks it's all good, it comes up with a cross it's not good. 
that's a top level and it's comparing on both servers in real time down at byte level. So if I double click on one of the job events, what it's going to do is actually compare all the job event components within that job in real time as well. All ticks, still all good. And all you people that understand what the job day code details are in Rev Schedule, I can double click on that and it will then go down to field level. And as it's an i-series, we also compare the job description, job queue, out queue, and user to run as. Because not only does the job data need to be there, that data needs to be there or else the job is not going to run successfully on the i-series. So we compare all those as well on i-series. Any field where the data is not correct, you will end up with a red cross there and it will trigger through all the different levels back here. Also, we can export the data as well. So not only can we run it, we can export it. I can save this as a PDF and then keep it periodically every day, every week, whatever I want to do. As I've got it as a PDF, I can actually send that to users as well so they can see. We also created a HA simulator in the simulation ribbon. If I click, click on iSeries 2 and click the simulator, it's going to tell us how long a cutover would take. So now we're going to the failover server and we're asking it how long the cutover should take based on the current events. This actually runs through the real programs that we'd use in a cutover. Now what we've got here is we've got 45 jobs that would be cut over, but there's only 39 there. So how does that work? Well, you'll, what you'll find in there is that every day job, JDC, has one base version of the job and six different flavours to run on every different day. It's the same job, but it can run in seven different ways running day of the week. That's why the difference between the 39 and the 45. Both the HA Integrity Checker and the Simulator can be run via RevView as well. Here's a HA Integrity Checker running via RevWeb and also the, the Simulator run via RevWeb as well. And as these can be run anywhere, anytime, you can be at a ball game, at a mall, out on the road, even on a flight. As long as you've got access to the web, you can run these anywhere, anytime. Okay, so what we want to do now is let's actually run a cutover. So using the two I series that we have here, you can see the jobs that are due to run today and they change colours as they're running on the operations panels like normal. And if I do the activate for high availability, option three, that's going to run through now and all those jobs, after I press the enter key, all those jobs there that have been shadowed over, all of a sudden will become activated. So that's run, I'll press F5 on the operations panel and what we're going to see then is there'll be some extra jobs that weren't active when the engine was running them before but they will become activated now and available for the Rev Scheduler engine to run them. There we go, HA Presentation and JMJDA Run Print. They are now active. Any jobs that were in there can now be executed by the Rev Scheduler engine. The same way to deactivate same way as a command, RJ deact HAV. It can also start and stop environments as well. So what we'll do, we'll deactivate it. Then what we'll do is we'll go back to the operations panel and these two jobs will disappear as well because they are no longer active to be run by the Rev Scheduler engine. So when we're doing our activate and deactivate, Rev View and Rev Scheduler are still running. There are no starting and stopping of services or anything like that. It all runs in a very simple throw the switch type of cutover manner. When the HA activation or deactivation is also happening, you can also go into the HA.net and go into the review ribbon. I can go to the I series that we cut over to and it actually captures all the details that happened during the cutover. So all the different job events now this is basically what happens in real time. What the simulator showed was a simulated one. In real time it put, took 0.921 of a second to cut over those 45 job events. We didn't start or stop environments. And when, then when we cut back, with the engine still running, it took 0.5, half a second. So what we've done is we've done a cut over in under a second. We've done a cut back in under a second on probably one of the slowest i-series still in production. All these things that we've got here, I can actually go into that and I can actually go into the review and I can export that as a PDF as well. Everything to do with the HA can be exported as PDFs. 
So there we go, in basically less than 10 minutes we've explained how the HA works, gone through the setup as well as cutting over and cutting back. You'll find that the RJACT HAV command and command line cuts over on the failover server, RJ deactivate HAV cuts back as well and this is available on every platform on the iSeries is a command, non iSeries are a command lines. We've gone through the integrity checker, the simulation, the whole lot in less than 10 minutes. This concludes this presentation.